Good morning, third graders. Today, we're going to start reading this book, Face to Face with Wolves, and use all of the text features in this book to help us collect information about wolves. All right, let's get started. So before I even open up the book, let me look at the title page again. The front cover of the book has a title at the top, Face to Face with Wolves. That tells me that this book is gonna be about getting close to wolves, really seeing what they look like and how they behave up close. Then I also have a photograph on this page. A photograph is a picture that somebody took with a camera, and it often shows exactly what something looks like through a camera. This photograph shows the face of a wolf up close, just like the title said. Now I can get started reading. Face to face. I grew up on the flat and treeless prairie. That's when I, where I first began dreaming about seeing a wild wolf. Wolves were my favorite animals as a boy, even though they were extinct on the prairie. I had seen them only in photos and paintings. When I was finally old enough to drive, I set out for the north woods of Minnesota. I knew wolves still lived there, and I hoped to photograph one, but I could not find any in the deep, dense woods. They were there, of course, but I didn't know how to look for them. So that's the text on this page, and it tells me the author is actually speaking to us in this book. Sounds like he really, really wants to see wolves. Now let me use some of the text features on this page to help me collect more information. <clears throat> on this page, I can see two photographs. This one looks like there's a wolf hiding behind a tree. I wonder if that's a picture that the, the author took and it kind of shows how shy wolves are, which is something that he was talking about in the text, that it was really hard to find them where he was growing up. Let me read the caption and see if it gives me more information. Wolves are very aware of their surroundings. Most of the time they are watching you before you see them. Ah, so now I know what this picture represents. It shows a wolf that is watching you and you probably wouldn't have noticed that this wolf was there yet. So I guess that means that in the wild, if like I go out in the woods, there might be wolves watching me and I would never know. Let me look at the other picture now. This one shows a man peeking out from behind a tree. I don't think that that's something that people usually do in the wild. So let me see if I can get some more information by looking at the caption. If you want to follow wolves in the wild, you have to think like a wolf. Ah, so I guess the author is telling us that if you want to find the wolves, since they're awfully sneaky and kind of hard to find, then you have to act like a wolf would act. So that's what he's trying to do in this photograph. Do you see how reading the captions gave me so much more information about these photographs? I wouldn't have known what they were talking about if I hadn't read the captions. Let me keep going and see if I can collect some more information about wolves. Years later, I jumped at the chance to travel to the high Arctic, far north in Canada, for National Geographic. Oh, and this is a National Geographic book, so I guess the author still works for them. The white wolves there are usually not afraid of people, since they see so few humans. They are curious about us. When I arrived at Ellesmere Island, just west of Greenland, I saw my first pack of seven white Arctic wolves. I followed them as they headed toward an iceberg. The leader of the pack was the first to see me. He looked at me without fear, letting me know there was no way I would sneak up on him. He went on walking and climbing to what was clearly his favorite spot on the iceberg, a shelf halfway up. He sat down to watch me, still clumsily trying to catch up to him. When I got as close to him as I could, we stared at each other. I looked at him through my t powerful camera lens. After all these years, I was finally face to face with my favorite animal. During that first summer, the wolves became used to seeing me around. I felt like I was a part of the pack. I was able to follow them as they hunted mucks, musk oxen and then brought the food back to feed their pups. Six cute little waddling gray bundles of fur. I watched the pups romp and play. 
I left the Arctic after three summers, sad to go, but excited too. I would take what I had learned about wolf behavior and begin looking for gray wolves in my new home, the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness in Northern Minnesota, the wolf country of my boyhood dreams. My wife and my co-author Judy and I have lived in this beautiful wild place for 30 years with wolves for neighbors. All right, now let me look at some of the text features on these pages and see if they're gonna give me some more information about wolves. I'm gonna start with the photograph since that's something we practiced on the last page. In this photograph, I can see it looks like an iceberg here or maybe a high mountain range. And right there is a wolf. It looks like a white wolf. So I'm wondering if it it's talking, if it's showing what the author was talking about on this page when he went up to the um, Greenland to see the white wolves that lived on the icebergs that weren't afraid of humans. But I need to check the caption to make sure that my prediction is correct. Let me do that now. High on his iceberg throne, the leader of the pack surveys his territory. I named him Buster after my father, the leader of my family's pack. Ah, so I was right. This picture is showing the pack leader from the Arctic wolves that the author found when he went to Greenland. So these don't show the wolves in his backyard. They show the wolves that he traveled to go and see way up north in the Arctic Circle. Now, on this page, remember like I showed you yesterday, we have a very different kind of text feature. This one has a heading at the top that's gonna tell us what this section is going to be about. And then there's some pieces of infor information arranged in bullet points. Bullet points tell specific facts about a topic and they're not arranged in a paragraph like we usually write information. They're just one at a time. That makes it easier for you to collect all of the most important facts all at once. Let me see what these bullet points are going to be about. What big eyes you have. Oh, I remember reading this yesterday. I think this is about how wolves have been shown in fiction books throughout history. But let me read to find out. Throughout history, wolves have inspired both fear and admiration. They have been our hunting partners, our competitors, and our guides. This is why nearly every culture has folk stories about wolves. Now I know that I'm going to be reading some bullet points about wolves in stories through history. Let me see which stories they talk about. This is the first bullet point. Fairy tales like Little Red Riding Hood reflect the fear that Europeans felt for wolves. I know that's true because when we were talking about Little Red Riding Hood, we noticed that all the characters are super afraid of the wolf. They think that he's going to eat them. So I guess the people that lived in that time and in that place must have also thought that wolves like to eat people. Let me read the next bullet point. In Rudyard Kipling's book, The Jungle Book, and the myth of Romulus and Remus, baby boys were raised by wolves. Well, I've heard of those stories before, that like boys got abandoned by their families and were in the woods and then the wolves raised them like they were their own babies. Those stories don't seem very realistic to me, but I guess there's been a lot of them through history. That's really interesting. Here's the last bullet point. To some Native Americans, wolves were spirit guides who were revered for their hunting abilities. Well, that one actually makes sense to me because I know that wolves are good hunters. So I guess the Native Americans have the most accurate stories about wolves. All right, that's it for my text features today. We worked on photographs, captions, and bullet points. Now it's your turn. See what text features you can find in your book about wolves.